Hi, I'm Susan Hutton, and um, I'm the Vice Chair of the Environmental Commission, and I'm going to talk about what we as individuals can do about climate change. Um, I'm not a scientist, and I'm not a policy person. I'm a writer, and I am a mom, and I've been interested in climate change since I was in college. And I've had a hard time trying to wrap my minds around the scale and the effectiveness that I can have as an individual. And um, when I've tried, I've come up against things like this. <laughs> Which, you know, sometimes I can figure out the math if I really button down and try to slog through it. Sometimes I can't. I don't have the acronyms. I don't have the background. Um, but what I want to know, and what I've had a hard time trying to figure out is, how far are we from where we need to be? And what do we need to do to get there? Um, and the two things that recently I have found really helpful are our city's climate action plan and a diagram that refers to the behavior wedge. Um, our climate action plan was passed in the city of Ann Arbor in December of 2012. And um, it gives us a map and an outline. And it talks about where we are and what we live. And it has all kinds of goals that we can follow that are pragmatic things for each of us to think about and to try to implement, um, which I really admire. Um, Mike talked uh, quite a bit about this. Uh, not quite a bit. He talked a little bit about this earlier. But our emissions. Uh, are kind of broken out here. Um, and as he said, residential is 22%, commercial and industrial is 25%, transportation 22%, and U of M is 30%. And the area that I'm interested in talking about tonight is the residential sector, the 2%, which is where I most familiarly um, inhabit. Um, and these are the goals. You know, our, our goals for 2015 are to reduce our emissions by 8% by 2025 by 25% and by 2050 by 90%. So how do we get there? So we look at this, and if you add up our numbers again, 22%, 22%, 25%, 30%, we're at 99%. And as Mike said, 1.2% of our emissions come from the city of Ann Arbor. And so if we look at our residential emissions, that means that even though our city has passed the Climate Action Plan, the action has to come from us. So what are ways that we can do that as individuals? You probably have seen these before. I know I've seen them before. Change your bulbs. Buy and use a programmable thermostat. Maybe you are like me, and the programmable thermostat is not really easy to read. I have found that if I Google my thermostat maker and the model, there's a YouTube video <laughs> that I can set up on my laptop right next to my thermostat, and there's some helpful person that will guide me through every step. I do it every October. It works. Um, unplug your gadgets. Walk, bike, carpool, take public transit. I am a huge fan of Google Maps. I can plug in my location. My phone will find where I am. Google Maps will say, there's this bus. Here's the bus stop. It'll take you this long to walk there. Here's how many stops you need to wait before you get off the bus. That kind of intimidation factor that I feel when I'm trying something new gets reduced a lot. So I find that really helpful. Um, upgrade your refrigerator, your air conditioner if they're more than five years old. Wash your clothes in cold water. Um, if you have a timer setting on your washing machine, set it to go off between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. because that's the most efficient time for us to run big appliances. Packaging, don't buy bottled water. Um, carry your own takeout container. If you're reheating your soup, use your microwave rather than your oven. These are all things that we can do. They're small, they're simple, but they are things that are effective. Um, I like this pie graph that comes from the um, Union of Concerned Scientists. Especially I like it because there's a wedge that talks about the stuff that you buy. Most carbon calculators don't include that information. Stuff you buy is 26%. These are facts that surprise me. Maybe you know them. Maybe you don't. If your garbage cart isn't full, don't wheel it to the curb. Wait until it is. Snow tire technology is a lot better. <laughs> we don't necessarily need four-wheel drives to get through our winters. Snow tires do the, do the job, and that means that we're more efficient for half the year. Running a full dishwasher load is more efficient than washing dishes by hand. Awesome. 
and meat has an enormous carbon footprint, whether it's local or not. This came from the Environmental Working Group. I hadn't seen this before, but the thing that I found really interesting about this is that there's, so the way this breaks down is the green portion of the bar will show you what the emissions are uh, before they leave the farm. The orange portion is after they leave the farm. You know, 27 kilograms of carbon dioxide go into making one kilogram of beef. I didn't know that. That's, that's quite a bit of carbon. So how much carbon dioxide do I create? Well, let's see. This is um, an average, and I took the number from the EPA. There are several, and this is just for tonight's purposes. You know, there are, everybody is different, everybody's consumption rates are different, but the ones that I'm using are 19.8%. So, you know, going back to our climate plan, we're trying to reduce our residential footprint by 22%. So if we look at our 2.2 million metric tons of carbon dioxide, we translate that to pounds because I don't know what metric tons means. So 22% of that is a little more than a million pounds. Reduce that by 8%, that's 85,362 pounds. Let's round it up, 85,500 pounds. So what does that look like? What do I need to do as an individual to make some progress toward that goal? Well, if I have an old refrigerator and I replace it, that's going to save 617 pounds. All right. If I use my laundry line for half of the laundry that I do, that'll save 900 pounds. Excellent. If I have an old 1970s furnace, which my house had, and I replace that, 3,550 pounds. OK. And if I, say, have a commute that's 40 miles round trip, and I decide I'm going to carpool with a coworker one day a week, that's going to save me 1,100 pounds. So altogether, I'm going to come up with about 6,200 pounds a year. All right, that feels pretty good. That's a huge investment for me to make. It's a huge financial investment. It's a huge time investment, and it's a huge behavior change, breaking a new habit, or breaking a habit investment. So let's see how that looks against our community's climate goals. And I think this is where we get tripped up because it feels like there is nothing that we can do that makes a difference. And that's really discouraging and really disheartening and upsetting. But that's not the right model. This is the model that we need to be following. It's not one house that we're looking at, it's 10 houses. If we get 15 houses to take those steps, we've exceeded our goal. 15 houses, there are 45,000 houses in our city. We just need 15. This is doable, there are so many roads to victory here, so many roads to success. We just need to get on one, and we need to stay on it, and we need to get our friends and our family and our neighbors to get on with us. And this is the thing that I come back to. Again, it's the behavior wedge. And this is an idea that we are still within that window where we can take actions that will put us on a path to sustainability that will kind of neutralize our carbon footprint and get us in a position where we can buy the time that we need by reducing our emissions now to develop and implement the technologies that will preserve us into the future. And I find this really inspiring and really moving because, you know, getting on the path is like being on, uh, taking on a new exercise regimen. You, you'll stay on it if you do it with a friend. And this is not just that you're doing it with a friend, you're doing it for a friend. You're doing it for the people that you love. I'm doing it for you, and you're doing it for me, and you're doing it for my kids. And we're in a community where this is something that we can do together. And, you know, climate change is our biggest threat, but it is also our biggest chance to come together as a community, and this is our opportunity to do it. None of us should walk out of this room tonight without signing up to do something. Maybe it is that you sign up to start a Meatless Monday campaign, and you do that in your neighborhood or at your kid's school. 
Maybe it is that you start an eco team, and that means that you know you look into low flow faucets, and you look into how to program that thermostat, and you look into what buses in your neighborhood will get you and your neighbors downtown, and you share that information with each other. We can do this, and I want to live in a community where we teach each other these things and where we share this with each other because we can't do this by ourselves. And I think we do live in that community, and I hope that you guys will sign on and talk to us about it and share your ideas too. Thanks.